About two years ago, I had an idea to make a plastic bag dryer. Since we use a lot of plastic bags around our apartment, and we like to reuse them at least once or twice by washing them out. That way we get a couple uses before throwing them into the landfill. So I came up with a concept and I made one. Uh, I even made a little video about it about a year and a half ago. And it's basically just a couple of sticks that you put the bag on and the sticks help prop the bag open and let them dry out. And it works really well. But the first one I made could only hold two bags. And it turns out we use the bag dryer so much every single day and we often have more than two bags that I decided I needed to make a bigger one. So that's what I'm doing here today. And so I'm starting with the sticks that the bags hang on. And they're just square pieces of oak that I got from the big box store. And at one end there's a slot and it's slotted so that it can move or slide on a dowel. And that's basically the pivot point for the for the stick because it pivots away from the wall and that way it can stick out when it's in use and then kind of fold away when it's not being used. And also on those sticks are four holes that four pieces of dowel rod go through and those pieces of dowel stick out and make kind of a tree looking thing with that stick and they help keep the bag propped open and let air get inside of them and that's what helps dry the bags out so well. I rounded over the edges of all those sticks so that they'd be nice, nice and smooth. And then I made a small little jig to help assemble all these sticks. And it just works by pounding in the dowel part of the way. And then I add a little bit of glue to the dowel. And then I'll go ahead and pound it down the rest of the way. And the little jig is set off from the table just the right amount so that the dowel gets centered right in the, the main stick there. And then just repeat that four times for each stick. So there's four dowels in each stick and there's four sticks so I can dry four bags at once. And then next I cut out pieces for the frame which is just more oak flat, flat stock. And I also cut out a bunch of these triangular shaped pieces uh, technically four sides but one of the sides is, has an angle on it and this is also part of the frame these are the pieces that hold on to the sticks so I taped them all together so that I could drill through all of them at once and these don't get a slot they just get one hole through them for the dowel And then they also get another hole for another dowel. And this dowel is for holding the sticks on as well. And you'll see in, this, in a little bit how it all works. I just rounded over the edges to make it nice and smooth so they weren't sharp. And then I laid out the frame. And it's just four pieces, super simple, nice and square. It's got skinny sides and the uh, tall top and bottom rails. Then I could use my belt sander after the glue dried to clean up the edges, clean out the glue squeeze out, make all the surfaces nice and flush. And then I clamped it to the table at an angle and that made it easier to glue the other triangular shaped pieces because they're also at an angle. And I taped up all the surfaces that were going to be by glue because I was going to assemble this with glue and I didn't want the moving parts to get glued together. So I used tape to help keep the glue off of the surfaces that were going to be touching. And here you can see starting to put it onto the frame. 
and I used a little square to make sure those little triangular gussets were going onto the frame square. And here's where having that at an angle made it easier to clamp to. And I added a scrap piece of that square stock in between the two gussets just to keep the spacing correct and another clamp. And just repeated that four times. Since those little gussets are only glued with end grain on the long grain, they're not really that strong. And they're going to take the most of the abuse because they have that moving stick on them. And they'll be kind of subject to being knocked around a little bit. So I thought it was a good idea to go back and add little tiny dowels just to help strengthen it. So I drilled holes from the back side all the way through into the gusset part way. And then added these 1 8 inch little dowels about an inch long into each one of the gussets and that'll help strengthen the, that connection quite a bit. And I could just snip them off after I pounded them in. And then of course I came back with the chisel after the glue dried and made them nice and flush. You can't even hardly tell they're there. And since I don't have a table saw, if I want to make long strips, I have to use my miter saw and a couple of framing squares to get things lined up, and then I can make several cuts. Obviously, I can only make strips that are about six inches long, but it's a decent way to get a few strips of something when you don't have a table saw. So these little strips I'm going to use to help hold the sticks in place. So since they're on a pivot, they can just kind of fall away from the wall or fall away from, from the mount and the frame. So these little pieces have a half circle in them and they hold on to one of the dowels at the top and that keeps it nice and secure and kind of keeps them locked in place while in, when you have the sticks folded up in a way. Of course, they weren't quite the perfect thickness because I cut them on a miter saw. So I sanded them down until they're nice and flush. And then I could glue those pieces on. And I also taped those up so that they wouldn't get glued to the main stick. And there's two of those for every stick. So eight of those get glued on. And that's pretty much it for the woodworking part of it. And I disassembled the whole thing. And then I could finish it. And I chose to use shellac. Because shellac is pretty safe for the kitchen. It's non-toxic. And these are going to be around bags and food. So that was a good choice. I put three coats of shellac on the sticks. And three coats on the frame. And that was a giant pain in the butt because there's a lot of little intricate places to get into in between the gussets and around all those dowels. Yeah, next time I'll definitely spray it. And final assembly, I could insert each of the sticks into the gussets and then insert the pivot dowel and insert the stopping dowel. And I came back and touched up the ends of the dowels with a little more shellac since I hadn't pre-finished those. And here you can see their dowels between the two gussets are a little bit different. And that's so that the pivot point is different on the neighboring sticks so they can pivot away from the wall at different angles. And while I was at it, I thought I'd make two. So my old one in the kitchen, it was time for that one to go. 
That one only had two. I put the new one up and got it in about the right position and then I clamped it in place and I could mark with a pencil then about where I wanted to drill the hole from the inside. So I was going to fasten this with a couple of screws from the inside out that way I didn't have any fasteners showing. And once I drilled a small hole I put a screw in it so it was just poking out and then I could put the bag dryer up there and kind of position it in the right spot and give it a little pounding and that transferred the screw hole onto the back of the frame and then I could pre-drill the back of the frame for the screw and then put it back up there and tighten the screws down. And it looks pretty good. Time to wash some bags. Thanks for watching.